Hi scholars, let's look at Teak 4.2e today. It says I can represent decimals including tens and hundreds using concrete and visual models and money. So I'm going to be using place value blocks and I unfortunately do not have the money manipulatives but I will do my best and draw it on the board to help you understand. So let's get started. The first thing I want you to see the place value of decimals is that there is a ones place, tens place, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and all that. That goes from here to the left. On the right, anything past the decimal, this is the tens place and this is the hundreds place. There is no such thing as a ones place, okay? Because if you think about it, when you look at this, you know, you have ones, tens, hundreds, you have tenths, hundredths, thousands. So it's like ones is in the middle and then everything to the right is a repeat of what's on the left, but it's th at the end. Okay? So, you know, again, there's no ones place. It starts with tenths and hundredths. So, what we use what we use in um normal uh place value blocks like uh ones, tens and hundreds Hang on, let me just draw this real quick. So we have ones, tens, and hundreds. Usually for the ones block, we use these little cubes. For the tens block, we use this. For the hundreds block, we use one of these. And then for the thousands block, we have that big cube, which I don't have with me right now, but that's just what I'm going to draw. So what I want you to understand is that when you are thinking of decimals, decimals are smaller than one. So, you know, think of a dollar. A dollar and 43 cents. 43 cents is less than the one dollar. So, if I have this representing the ones place, whatever represents this and this is going to be smaller than that. Okay? So, just for a second, you know, we use this, this little cube to represent the ones place. Just for one second, let's pretend this is the cube, the little cube for the ones place, okay? So if we use that for the ones place, then for the tenths place, we use this, okay, because there's ten. And then for the hundreds place, we use this. The reason why is because if you think of ones place, you think of a dollar, okay? There are 100 cents in a dollar. That's why this hundreds block works well for a ones place when you're thinking about decimals, okay? Now, this works great to represent tenths place because I need 10 of these to make $1. So it's like saying this is a dime. A dime is one-tenth of a dollar. This stick is one-tenth of a hundreds block. And so then we have this. This is great for hundredths place because a hundred of these make one of these. So this is like your penny. So this is your hundredths block. This is your tenths block. This is your ones block. This only works with decimals, okay? So like if you get a question that says which of the following best represents the decimal, you know, 1.37, this is how you need to see it as. But if they gave you a question like which of the following <clears throat> best represents... 137, then you need to go back to these kinds of blocks. I hope this is making sense. By the way, I found my thousands block. It's a flat picture, but it's there. So let's go back to place value decimals. So suppose I have three tenths. The way to represent it would be you would use three tenths blocks. So three tenths. Now let's say I had three tenths and four hundredths. So that would be red, 34 hundredths, by the way. 
So then that's like saying I have three tenths, three of these, and then four hundredths, which is four of these. So when you put it together, it's like 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So 34 hundredths. You know, keep in mind that 10 of these fit in here. So you could think of these as 10 of these. So 10, 20, 30, 34 hundredths. Now we can add to it by saying two ones blocks. So you would use these for that. So this is how you would read it. It would be, anytime you see a decimal, you say and, so two and 34 hundredths. Wherever it stops, you say that word. So then it would be two and 34 hundredths. So in this situation, since I don't have any coins, you would have three dimes, the 10 cent dimes, and then four pennies, and then two dollar bills to represent that. Let's look at another one. How do you read it? Three and 56 hundredths. So that's saying that I have three ones, which would be these. Remember we talked about this like being three dollars. So a dollar is a hundred cents. That's why we use this. It look it, it reminds think of a hundred cents making this dollar bill. So three ones and then five tenths. That's why we're using the the, the ten sticks because you know it, it's like one tenth of a hundreds block. So five tenths and then six hundredths, which would be these. So three and fifty six hundredths. Now for money purposes, it's like saying I have three dollar bills, five dimes, and then six pennies. I think the best strategy for this is draw like whatever number they give you whatever decimal they give you just draw it in a place value block uh, tr place value chart and that will really help you break it down and understand okay it's three ones it's five dimes or three ten uh, five tenths it's six pennies or six hundredths I can't tell you how how much sometimes you know students see this and they're like, where do I even begin? I don't know how many ones that is. I don't know how many tenths. It's not that they don't know, but if you just set it up and separate it and label it, it, it suddenly all clicks and comes together. Sometimes, you know, you don't even have to draw this entire place value uh, chart. You can just do this, fill it in, and just be like, that's the hundredths, that's the tenths, that's the ones. You don't have to make it all complicated and fancy like mine. Just a quick place value chart can make things so much easier for yourself. Okay, let's look at another example. The way you would read it is one and four hundredths. Not one and four tenths, because that four is in the hundredths place. So one and four hundredths. So to represent it, this is my ones block according to decimals. I have zero tenths, so I'm not going to use any of those, and then four hundredths. Okay, this is what it looks like. Now, whoops, sorry about that. <laughs> now, as far as money is concerned, it's a dollar bill and four pennies. One dollar and four cents. That's how you can also read it. Okay, let's look at this one. 2 and 9 tenths. Notice there's nothing in the hundreds place, so I'm not even going to get any place value blocks out for that. So two ones, so it's like two dollar bills. Remember, we're going to use these. And then 9 tenths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tenths. So these, I have 9 of these. So that's my visual. And as far as money is concerned, it would be two dollar bills two one dollar bills and then nine dimes
So I wanted to show you how you can draw uh, to represent decimals. So this is like one of these. This is one of these. And then an X is a little the little cube, the hundreds place. So if I have one and 38 hundredths, I went ahead and just showed you that's the ones, the tenths, the hundredths. So there's eight hundredths, there's three tenths, and then there's one ones. So let's look at um, practicing drawing different decimals. I want you to try and draw two and 45 hundredths. Press pause and then press play when you're ready. So ones, tenths, hundredths, two and forty-five hundredths. So two ones would be two of these, four tenths and five hundredths. It's that easy. You can also think of money, two dollar bills, two one dollar bills, four dimes and five pennies. Here's another one I want you to practice. 3 and 6 hundredths. Press pause, draw, press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so 1's, 10's, hundredths, 3 and 6 hundredths. So notice I have nothing in the tenths place, so 3 1's and 6 hundredths. 78 hundredths. So um, press pause and then draw and then press play when you're ready to check. So in this one, I can already tell there's no ones place, so just seven, seven tenths and then eight hundredths. Last one, I want you to press pause, draw, press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so if you notice, Nothing in the hundreds place, so there's going to be two ones, nine tenths, but then I'm not going to draw any hundreds. So one last thing I wanted to share was um, looking at drawings on paper of decimals, but not the drawings that you've been drawing in the previous videos. So like here is what I'm talking about. So this is a hundreds block, but with decimals, remember we talked about this would be a ones block because a one is like one dollar and a hundred cents equal a dollar. So that's why 100 blocks together equal one whole and so that's like a dollar. And so then you have your tens block here, but we're gonna call it tenths when we talk about decimals. And then we have ones blocks here, but we call them hundreds blocks because one of these is like right here. And so there's a hundred of them to make one whole. Okay. So, you know, if I were to represent one in 39 hundredths, I would be shading in one whole. Wait, before I do this. So if I were to represent one in 39 hundredths, I would have one of these. Uh, three, three of these, okay, and then nine, nine of these, okay. So this is what one in thirty nine hundredths looks like. So then now on here, you know, one and thirty nine hundredths, okay. So then it's like one and. 39 hundredths. I hope that's making sense. So you would see all these close together. I didn't have time to like cut them out and glue them and make a new one. I just wanted you to see that this is what you would see shaded in to represent one in 39 hundredths. So two and eight hundredths. Notice I have no tenths in this one. So then here's my two ones. It's like $2. And then I would have eight ones, uh, eight hundredths blocks. So this is what two and eight hundredths look like. And then coloring it in, two whole, and then eight of these. 